Hello, I'm Dr. Rumsey. And I'm Dr. Sood. And we're here to talk about monitors for people with atrial fibrillation. So I think first we should say that uh, the type of monitor that you choose for AFib really depends on whether or not you have symptoms or you don't. So if you have AFib and you've been having symptoms like either you feel palpitations mm -hmm. or you feel tired or dizzy, then you can purchase your own monitor. And so Dr. Sood is wearing an Apple Watch and I'm wearing a Fitbit Watch. Both are capable of checking your EKG um, at any time if you are feeling symptoms. The third option is a cardio device, which gives you an ECG that pops up on your on an app on your phone, which can be shared with uh, your physician, your care provider to the ER. But this is specifically only when you have symptoms. So patients who are feeling, actively feeling, either palpitations or chest pain or dizziness, shortness of breath, uh, it could be from atrial fibrillation. It, it may not be. In those acute phases, if you are able to get your ECG by putting this on your fingers, uh, it's a reasonably accurate ECG. But again, this is only during symptoms. Uh, the Apple Watch and Fitbit Sense, and uh, now also the Samsung Watch, which have these features, may detect an irregular heart rate when you may not be feeling it. Uh, for example, a lot of patients who have symptomatic atrial fibrillation also have paroxysms or episodes where they may not be as symptomatic, where the rate might be low, so they may not necessarily reach out and do an ECG at that particular time. So if a patient wants to have a monitor so that they can check their rhythm anytime they have symptoms, the Cardia is uh, the cheapest device and they just need to use their fingers to get an EKG. The problem with this is that uh, you may not always have it on you. So most people wear their watch, mm -hmm. whether they're working out or uh, at the beach or whatever, and so they always have it with them at a restaurant um, so that as soon as they feel symptoms, they can check an EKG and in 30 seconds they've had a recording. The other place where um, of, of something you can wear is better than having a device separate is uh, when you're sleeping or taking a nap. 30% of atrial fibrillation happens during sleep and at rest. So, you know, you might miss some episodes that uh, are happening uh, which are not as symptomatic. In those cases, an Apple Watch and a Fitbit device or a Samsung or anything that's wearable will not give you an ECG because you're not symptomatic, but might give you a notification that your heart rate is irregular, just the same way a blood pressure cuff does sometimes. That might alert you towards more atrial fibrillation episodes, especially, for example, if you're sleeping, your heart rate is 50 or 60 or 70 normal, and suddenly shoots up to, let's say, 90s, 100s, you know, or 120, and it's irregular, that's a reasonably certain sign that you're having atrial fibrillation. So I do have patients who tell me that they don't feel any AFib and every time they check their EKG, it's normal, but they have noticed that in the middle of the night, their heart rate does jump up to 200 beats per minute, or they've received notifications from their wearable watch that um, they had either an irregular heartbeat at night or a very rapid heartbeat at night, which tells us that they may not be having symptomatic AFib during the day, but that they are still having AFib at night. It's a, it's a pretty good indicator. Agreed, and the other advantage of having the, the watches uh, as a monitor for people with atrial fibrillation is a lot of these now track sleep, and also the new watch tracks pulse oxygenation. And you might find, as is very well known, that uh, during more disturbed sleep or the nights you are not resting well, or for example, sleep apnea, which can lead to decrease in oxygen during night, all those things are associated with atrial fibrillation episodes. So you see, you might find a pattern. And in the Club AFib app, we have built these patterns and these risk factors, which uh, suggest or which can educate you on what precipitates your atrial fibrillation. I use the Fitbit and the Apple Watch to check an EKG. It only takes 30 seconds. And uh, with either system at the end, it does collect all of your EKGs on an app on your phone and at any time you want you can send any of your EKGs to your physician or a family member and the Cardia also has the same system where you can go to an app on your phone or to the website 
and it collects all of your EKGs and you can have uh, them sent to your physician. So let's talk about how these watches sometimes have helped our patients. Uh, we had a patient who had AFib and she had an ablation and we thought everything went well, but she continued to complain that she felt tired all the time. And so um, her son gave her an Apple Watch for Christmas and I told her every time you feel tired, just check your EKG, I wanna see what's going on. And uh, turns out her heart rate was quite slow and this was typically a couple of hours after taking medications. So really in her, we were able to titrate her medications down where decreasing her medications actually improved her, where um, atrial fibrillation was presumed, but not actually the cause of her symptoms, but a slow heart rate from medications. Yes, so I agree. So sometimes our patients are complaining that they're feeling palpitations, but when they check their EKG, it's only extra beats. It's not actually AFib. And that helps me decide which medicines I should go up on. And like you said, sometimes the patients are feeling tired or dizzy because of slow heartbeats, not because of AFib. And so that tells us we need to back off on the medicines. Um, you know, a different example is a, is a young patient of mine who's an avid sailor, and uh, he wore the Apple Watch, uh, and his Apple Watch gave him an irregular heart rate notification a few times when he was just sitting and he would check his pulse and it was 150 beats a minute, which was very unusual for him. And um, he was able to do an ECG and capture uh, AFib. And what I did was when I saw him in the office, he was of course in normal rhythm. And um, he was also a club AFib member where he synced his watch to his app. And when he came to see me in a couple of months, he showed me all the times where his watch gave him a notification. He was able to take an ECG and we were able to compare graphically uh, his episodes of atrial fibrillation. It turns out he was having a lot more than he realized, um, which is another great feature of having a continuous wearable monitor on your wrist. We have a patient who has AFib and keeps complaining that despite all of our medications, she still feels tired. So uh, she saw you in the office and most yeah. of her monitors showed what? She actually got an Apple Watch, which she has now linked to the Club AFib app and she does uh, ECGs uh, daily uh, in the morning after her medications and when she has symptoms. And those EKGs get uploaded directly to her Club AFib app. And when she's seeing me in the office, she can show me an app and show me if she has had AFib and sinus rhythm. And in fact, we have picked up some episodes where she was symptomatic, where she was in atrial fibrillation, uh, picked up by the watch. So it really, Having a monitor that is continuous and on you all the time really helps and hence we, um, we, we have the Club AFib app which seamlessly syncs to your ECGs. The second you do an ECG on your Apple Watch, it populates as normal, abnormal in a graphical format uh, on the app. So you're able to compare your days when it, you had it, how many times a week you had it and also if you have any risk factors like did you have an extra beer uh, or an alcoholic drink or maybe too much caffeine or did you not sleep well all those things can correlate uh, based on the app but you really need a monitor uh, at sort of your beck and call so to say uh, to diagnose uh, these symptoms so now let's talk about monitors for people who don't feel any afib symptoms so basically a monitor that a doctor has asked you to get because he's either suspicious that you have afib or wants to know exactly how much AFib you have or don't have. Agreed, so there's, there's two real monitors uh, for this. So first, um, I'd like to talk about uh, this. This is an event recorder or a Holter recorder, depending on the duration. You can use it for a day uh, if you're having a lot of symptoms or typically for seven to 30 days. So it's a continuous monitor, it goes up right here on the chest. And uh, there is a button that you can push if you're having symptoms you don't get to see them unlike a wearable device, but it is transmitted to your doctor's office and they're able to see what's going on. The other way it works also is if something is going on that you may not be having symptoms, and but it meets an abnormal criteria, it'll send an automatic notification to the doctor's office. And then comes an implantable loop recorder. So this is an implantable loop recorder that goes in the fourth rib space right here in front of the chest. Most of these devices now have an app on your phone that it syncs to wirelessly and can send a transmission to the doctor's office. Again, one limitation is you don't get to see the ECG, only a doctor's office has the information. 
The battery for most of these devices is between three to five years, depending on how much you use it. So these monitors are continuous. They're checking your EKG every second, every single heartbeat, and the battery lasts three or five years. And the physician is getting notified every time uh, you have an episode of AFib. So the first reason is if they suspect AFib, they're gonna ask that you have one of these implanted. The second big reason is if you have AFib and you've had an ablation to cure your AFib, they want to know if that ablation was successful. So they implant the monitor so that they can detect if any AFib does occur again in you without you noticing while you're sleeping or just an asymptomatic episode. True, you know, uh, having said that, data shows that a lot of patients who have symptomatic paroxysmal episodes post ablation might still have some episodes, but they may be a lot less symptomatic. The rate might be slower and uh, it's a commonly known issue. I get asked this question a lot after an ablation, if we can stop our blood thinners. And the truth is, only if you have a continuous monitoring device based on your risk score, um, can you really be sure that you're not having atrial fibrillation episodes, even if you were extremely symptomatic before or prior to the ablation. This again boils down to the same thing we talked about earlier, about 30% episodes happening at night. So, you know, those episodes may not have caused you to panic or have symptoms uh, pre-ablation, and you might still have some, uh, especially if you have sleep apnea, because an ablation may not fix all of them in entirety. Having said that, the duration matters as well based on your risk score. So is, you know, 30 seconds versus five minutes versus 10 minutes versus an hour, all those things are important in making decisions about medications anticoagulation and sort of future treatment plan. Uh, so that's where continuous long-term data is extremely helpful to your physician in management of atrial fibrillation. Some patients have had a pacemaker or a defibrillator implanted for a specific reason, either because of a, an old heart attack or because they um, needed a pacemaker because their heart was too slow. If you've had a pacemaker implanted, then this does act as a 24 seven monitor. Mm -hmm. And so your physician does have access to every single heartbeat um, every time he interrogates your pacemaker. And uh, in some patients, that's how their AFib was detected. So they had a pacemaker for a particular reason. And then during one of their interrogations, their physician tells them, by the way, I've noticed that you've had irregular heartbeats called AFib for a few hours or a few minutes a day, and then they need to treat it. So. Um, we wanted to include that fact that a pacemaker or defibrillator is also a monitor that is implanted, that is continuous, um, and that sometimes is the way we detect AFib. So to summarize, two ways to monitor for uh, symptomatic atrial fibrillation. The cardio device that is available at your local pharmacy uh, to get an ECG, which pops up on an app on your phone, which can be shown or sent via email to your doctor or uh, a variable watch, like uh, the Apple Watch, the uh, Samsung Watch, or the Fitbit Sense. And uh, the second, you know, doctor prescribed monitor that goes on the chest for a day or two days or 30 days. Okay. Physician prescribed implantable loop recorder, which again, as I mentioned earlier, is something you can see how it's implanted in just under the skin in front of your chest and um, this lasts for three to five years and gives continuous information to the physician about what is going on with your heart. And that is all. Stay in sinus as always.